We've looked at how the uh, DFC is enabled us to manage the mix. So one of the things that obviously, I mean, compressors, EQ, it doesn't really matter how many channels we've got, that's relatively easy. But reverb, presumably, you've got to have some, you know, it's got to be better if you've got reverb that is somehow tied, that where the two layers are tied together. Yeah. So the first one we're going to look at is, is the TCM6000. So yep. they've done some work to produce a, yep. a, a, a 3D reverb. Yep, so that I think their, their sort of idea um, was to make something which is, I don't know if you can call it like speaker agnostic or it can have as many output channels as, y as you like. Mm. So um, although we're looking at it on the screen here, this is actually just controlling yeah. the M6000 hardware. So that's this right. is so not a plug-in. No, that's right. We've got, so we've got a hardware box over there. We're going to put it here on the screen so we can see it and you can control it from here. And you can immediately see this. It, it takes up sort of two engines. Um, and there's different configurations, obviously. And this one is an Oro configuration. We've got 5.1 or 5.0 going in. And we're going to have... Um, output 11.1 uh, in this particular instance. So if I show you, we've got it center, and I'll pan mm -hmm. it around. Ceiling speakers alone are not enough to get a true... So you're panning the dry signal, the yep. but the reverb s seems to be refocusing itself. Yeah, exactly. So as we go around, you can see it sort of propagating, the input's changing. Yeah. Uh, and it's processing that, and it's kind of co it's coming out of the correct... Um, speakers so you find that compared to a normal sort of dry pan that that coat sort of the correct sort of uh or the correct simulation of um those reflections give you really good yeah, space because you're movement. steer you're effectively steering this into a 5-1 input of the yeah. reverb so the reverb is getting a steered signal and therefore then putting the reverb elements equally in the right places. Yeah, and um, they've got um, this sort of really ship, they've already built a sort of a, a kind of a set. So you've got like, this is a symphony hall, they've got a few halls, they've got like an unfurnished room, um, and they've got a set of sort of reverbs which should kind of be a good starting point for anyone doing a mix. And, and then you can create your own your yeah, own absolutely. variants of those, save those as presets. So, yeah. but they're giving you the starter, the palette, the basic yeah. plain palette. Yeah. which you, can then, you yeah. can then work from. And you can hear immediately, as soon as we sort of put this um, 3D reverb on spatially, it's, it's, y it's a different effect when you, when you move that around, you move the dry objects around it with those kind of reflections, it really, it really places it mm. nicely, I think. And again, you can just use it very subtly just to, to take the edge off uh, uh, the, the dry dialogue and yep. almost place it yep. in the room. So presumably for ADR stuff, yep. that is absolutely brilliant because you can take what will often be a very dry, you know, have no room on it at all because it's yep. been recorded in the studio, and, and actually recreate the space that the original dialogue was, was tracked it. Because I think, I think sometimes there's an assumption that you can, um, you can only really go... 11.1 if it's a big sort of cavernous space or it's like a church or something with with huge acoustics and you know how could you do like a smaller uh, space and actually the cues that you that sort of the psychoacoustic cues you get from having reflections which kind of are like a small room reflections can really make a space kind of close in and I sort of you know with the sort of the unfurnished room you can quite quickly locate something you don't you almost don't even notice the reverb but it starts yeah. to feel like you're in a small space and that's one of the things I've always you know I, I think I thought initially okay well this is this will only be this will be good for the big halls and stuff but actually when you start using it it's, it, 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 it gives you you can have quite an enclosed space when you've got it in height as well it's sort of it kind of works for that as well so that's the TC M6000 yeah uh, with its new uh, software to do the the 3d audio yeah of course michael khan's exponential audio has come up with this way of linking two of his reverbs yeah. Yeah. can we take a look at that absolutely yeah sure okay so we've changed screens we've changed sessions and i can see two copies of michael's uh, phoenix verb surround and you're using his new public beta linking software to effectively tie these two reverbs yeah. together now, um, I think, like you, I'm a big fan of Michael's stuff, so I was pretty excited to 
um, to get my hands on a, 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 an early beta version of this um, and was blown away, as I was with the original. Um, and what Michael's done is, is fantastic integration. This is something I sort of, um, you know, back in back before any tools were available, I used to try and couple together sort of 5.1 reverbs and um, could get like a kind of a cool effect. But the problem always was you couldn't pan into it and the propagation didn't work properly. So, you know, you can you can get a bit of a, you can play a bit with pre-delay and, you know, color and things of the height layer. But at the end of the day, you can't achieve what Michael has yeah, It would have been fine for static, but as yeah. soon as you start moving things yeah. around, it all starts to go wrong. Um, and with Michael's uh, version, you've got, um, You've got an extra sort of section here, 3D, and he's got some wonderful uh, explanation videos on his site. It will do a far better job than me. But effectively, you link together. So you have your, um, you, you find your plugin. So you can have multiple um, instances and just link together the correct ones. And you can have them linked or unlinked, meaning that the parameters you change in one will or won't affect the other. Um, so that's nice if you want to get them both in the same ballpark. And if you want to do some extra tweaking, you know, you done link and, um, and, and get them to where you want to be. Um, once that's done... So is that a bit like automation, where you can unlink two faders, do a tweak, and then relink it, and they then track each other? Or I think that, that part of it, once you've set it, you need to kind of leave it. You, right. You'd kind of... Um, I think the linking or unlinking isn't automatable. It's, it's a sort of an on-off right. switch. Um, but generally, you'd kind of... You know, you have a preference for one or the other. Most times, I... I don't need to, it works so well, I don't, I, I've never really needed to unlink them and do yeah. things separately, but it's definitely there. Yeah. And if you're trying to find something very specific to an environment, you can kind of, you know, you, you can really do that. Um, equally, you can kind of copy paste the settings or whatever mm. if you want. So, um, what's it, n this is our lower um, reverb and this is our sort of height uh, reverb. And um, here, it's sort of a 5.1 lower layer, and here it's Oro 3D height, which is the uh, which allows you to um, put it all. You can pan all around the whole X Y Z um, field, including going through the sort of the top speaker, the the Voice of God channel, and it will propagate through the rest of the system as it should. Um, and if I play you a section, you'll hear how well it works. So pan around, and you'll f you hear it gives you really good localization mm. and then when you go up into the height I'll pull this up you find it sort of wow it propagates yeah. really really nicely in the way that it should and this is something which I'd never been able to achieve despite my sort of cheats and works around you know workarounds this this just works the way it should and as you know I mean the same quality of uh, you know the <laughs> reboot television and the efficiency is there so you can kind of run these you can run a whole bunch of these. Yeah. Um, I mean, every session. time it comes out with a different version, it's even more efficient. One of the features yeah. of the new version is more efficient, more yeah. efficient, more efficient. Which, if you're going to sort of double up a bunch of your reverbs, yeah. you need that. So you can run a whole heap of these, and it, it, it just goes. Yeah. And, you know, you can kind of pull it. You can come in here, and you sort of... We've got it linked, so if I were to kind of come in and take one of the, you know, the post rooms, so yeah. take a tight photo studio, yeah, you can see they both change. Jump, yeah. And anything I'm changing will 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 go in both, and it's you know it's fun it's it, it's it's really lovely to see. Well, maybe you know uh, you can have a bit of a play around properly. Mm. It's a it's a shame we can't you know you have no. to experience. Yeah, it. you have to um, be in the room. <laughs> yeah, but it gives um, the ability to put that kind of spatial information on otherwise dry you know point sources is is a yeah. huge factor in in, in giving you. Um, proper localization for things as well as making it sound you know beautiful and all those kind of things y whether you're going in with sort of mono or stereo you know dry or slightly sort of reverberant sources or you're going f you know to sort of sweeten up or add yeah. add something to, to a 5.1 then it, it really i mean it's it's great it's a fantastic tool brilliant love great. it great great well thank you very much for showing me how we can we've already got tools to handle uh, 3D audio in terms of Revo, which is obviously the tool that's going to need the, the linking or, or the dedicated, uh, dedicated hardware.